שבת שלום. כן, שבת שלום. Norgar left you this. Norgar? Yes, he's at the for the Hatala. Shabbat Shalom. Yes, I just checked it. Shabbat Shalom. Yes, it is. I just double checked it. Uh -huh, the morning was perfect. Mm -hmm. So you are in the perfect spot here. Are you good? Going back.
de di da ya da da ya 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 da 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 ya de di da ya da da ya 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 da 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 ya de di da ya da da ya 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 da 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 ya de di da ya da da ya 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 Shabbat shalom, everyone, to all of you who are watching. I wonder how many you are. I'm hoping 10. Someone will confirm for me after Shabbat that it was 10. I'm going to bank on 10, maybe 12, 15, 18, 20. Don't know. Someone tell me by email after Shabbat how many people were watching while you were watching. It would be helpful for me to know. Uh, we're going to do Mincha because we're in the last few minutes when Mincha could be done. We'll do some Torah study of the next week's Parsha. And then we will... Um, uh, conclude Shabbat together. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank and honor Norm Gar, who made a little cheat sheet of all the page numbers from the three Sidurim that we call from, so we don't have to keep looking at each one. So, Ashrei is 214 in the Lev Shalem, 226 in the Sim Shalom, the Slim Shalom, that is, and 558 in the... Sorry, which one is which? Sim Shalom. Yeah, 226 in the Slim Shalom, and... 558 in the single volume Sim Shalom. And uh, I'll start off by saying what I've been saying for weeks now, which is that this place is very empty without you. It's a real honor to be in here. I love being in this space, as I can imagine you know, uh, having put so much of my, uh, my energy and attention to helping craft this space along with such an amazing team of, of volunteers and architects. But it wasn't built for one person. It was built for all of you, and I can't wait to have you all back in here. Ashrei. 
Ashwe Yoshwe Vetecha, O Jalu Chasela, Ashwe Ham Shakahalo, Ashwe Ham Shedonai Lohav, Tehilala David, Aramim Chalala Roshachal, Roy Mavach. Hallelujah. Next page, Uvalet Sion, Goel, Ulashave, Feshev Yaakov, Neum Adonai, a Redeemer will come to Zion. And to all who return from sin within the tribe of Jacob, says God, Vanizor Bitiyo Tamarushan. Viata Kadosh Yo Shaftilo Yisrael, the Karazel Zev Yamar, Kadosh Kadosh Kadosh, Adonai Tseva Omalaharas Kevodo, Mikablin Dami Dami Yamlin Kadish Bishme Maroma, Ila Abech Hinte Kadish Al Abarg Bote Kadish. Vatisa any Ruach, Vashmach Rekol Rash Kado, Barak Varanai Mim Komo. Untalatni Rucha Vishimat Patraglin. I don't know him, Loch, Leola Hambaed. Baruch Hello, Hain, Usheberan, Ulich Vodo, Baruch Hello, Hain, Usheberan, Ulich Vodo, Baruch Hello, Hain, Usheberan, Ulich Vodo, Lich Vodo, Ay, 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 Odapam, Odapam, Lich Vodo, Odapam, Odapam, Lich Vodo, Odapam, Odapam, Lich Vodo. Behave Dilanu Minato, in Behave Dilanu Minato, in Behave Dilanu Minato, in Minato, in Odapa, Odapa, Min Hato, in Odapa, Odapa, Min Hato, in Odapa, Odapa, Min Hato, in Minatalan to write. At this point on Shabbat afternoon, we would read the Torah. There are many scrolls of Torah behind me. And this parsha I could read without practicing, and the reason I could read it without practicing is because parsha midbar, the next parsha in the cycle, is my bar mitzvah parsha, the first words of Torah I ever learned to read, aside from the biahafta, which we learn as a song before we realize it's Torah reading, is from parsha midbar. Although I think I learned the maftir first, so this was probably the second aliyah I learned. Uh, I'll lane it for you uh, right now without taking the Torah out of the ark. We've been kind of keeping the Torah away, even though we could bring it out, and we'll bring it out triumphantly the next time we have a minion in this room. If you're in there, it's Chaim Chumash, it's page 769. Or just, if you have a Bible, a Tanakh, it's the Book of Numbers, Bamidbar, chapter 1. Very nostalgic verses for me. I'm thinking of my home in Connecticut where I learned these words. I'm thinking of my teacher, Myrna Zaret of Blessed Memory, who taught my mother how to read Torah for her adult bat mitzvah four years before I, was, I was, my, became bar mitzvah, and then my sister had to read Torah three years before my bar mitzvah, and for two years in a row, all I could hear them doing around the house was uh, chanting Torah and Haftorah chop, and it became so, so much of a song in the background of my mind that I just learned, uh, I learned it um, um, naturally and organically. And then applied it to these words. Vaida ber Adonai el Moshe b'midbar Sinai b'ohel moed b'echad lachodesh hasheni b'shana hashenit. Let's say tam 
Mi Eretz Mitzrayim Lemor Seu at Rosh Koladat Bene Israel, the Mishpachotam, the Vetabotam, the Miss Parshemot, Kozahar, the Gugolotam, the Bene Srim Shanava Mala, Koyotes Valley, Israel Tifke du Otam, Litsivotama Taviaron, Vidhem Yuish Ish Lumata Ish, Rosh Levet Avotav, who to be very precise, the way I just laned it is not the way I learned it, because the way I lane now is a very sing-songy Ashkenazi trup, which is kind of an amalgamation of common trups that you hear around the Jewish world. I was taught what's really a, a high German trup, that's just the trup, or maybe it's, it's similar to actually to a British trup, which is what my teacher taught me. So let's see if I can bring out that early trup, and I'll try to do the rest of the Aliyah the way I actually learned it the first time. You'll hear it's a little bit more staccato, a little bit more formal than the sing-songy. Uh, starting with verse 5. Ve'ele shemot ha'anashim asher yamdu itchem liruvein elitzur ben shteyor lishimon shlumiel ben suri shadai lihuda nachshon ben aminadav liyissachar netanel ben suar lizvulun eliav ben chelon livne yosef lefraim elishama ben amihud Limnashe Gamliel Bain Pratzor, Levin Yamin Avidan Bain Gidoni, Ledan Achiezer Bain Amishadai, Lasher Pagiel Ben Ochran, Legad Eliasaf Bain Duel, Lenaftali Achira Bain Enan, Ele Krue Haida, Nisye Matot Abutam, Rashe Alfe Israel Haim. Hear the difference in the, in, the, in the notes? It's subtle. You can tell it's Torah trap, but it's a little bit more choppy. I'll do the third aliyah to the same German-British trap that I learned. I remember learning that second aliyah. I did the triennial cycle at, at my, my bar mitzvah, so the, what I just um, read, which is the middle of the first aliyah by midbar, is actually the second aliyah of the, of the triennial when you're on the first uh, level. And I remember that that seemed like a very ali easy aliyah to learn because you just have to learn the pronunciation of the names of the chieftains of each tribe. And for nearly each verse, the trup over the first word of the verse or of the um, which basically the, the trap over the tribe is a gadol. Gadol, leshimon, lihuda, lizvulun, lefraim. The way I would do it now is leshimon, lihuda, lizvulun. That's the gadol I do now. And there were three of them. I remember noticing it back then in seventh grade that instead of the first note being dun dun dum dum, it was pashta katon. So limnashe and then levin yamin. And I just thought that was interesting, and I had to remember which three were that trup as opposed to the Gadol trup. Okay, third aliyah of this short Torah reading. Uh, verse 17. shemot. <speaking in Hebrew> Mi bain esrim shana vamala la gulgulotam kasher tziva adonai et moshe vayif kadeim bimi bar sinai. And uh, in just a moment, um, after we uh, finish Davri Mincha, we'll be looking a little more closely at what verse? Um, verse 17. Vaykach Moshe Yaron, Moses and Aaron took. Eight anashim ha'ela, these men, the men um, that we just mentioned in the previous verses, asher nikvu b'shemot, who were called out by name. We'll linger on that with some midrash in a few minutes. That's the end of the Torah reading. We'll now go to the Amidah, which you can find on 223 in the Lev Shalem, 234 in the Slim Shalom, and 574 in the Sim Shalom. How should I do this with the microphones where they are? I was thinking that maybe I would um, do the Amida out loud so you could just hear it. I wish you could give me a response as to what you prefer, um, but it's going to be hard to do because I have to turn around and face the Arona Kodesh because I definitely want to face the Ark when I dive in the Amida. Let's do the Amida quietly. Again, 230, 223, 234, or 574, and then we'll come back and sing Alenu together. And the Amida is then, again, is said quietly.
Hopefully you're all finished with your Amidah by now. I don't really mean hopefully. Uh, if you're still davening, that's beautiful. You're still in the middle of your private recitation. Hopefully meaning I hope I'm not interrupting you. Norm, if you are watching, we need one more thing added to the cheat sheet, and that is Tzit Katcha, which is said after the Amidah. It's on 230 in the Lev Shalem. It's at the bottom of 239 in the Slim Shalom, bottom of 584 in the Sim Shalom. Three verses that begin with the word Sid Kadcha, your righteousness, your justice, God, as we make a transition in the waning hours of Shabbat to the rest of the week. Sid Kadcha Tzedek Le'olam, Betoratcha Emet, your justice is forever and your Torah is truth. And the justice of God is until the heavens, because you have performed wonderful things, God, who is like you. Your justice, your righteousness are like the mountains of ever everlasting mountains. And your, um, your mishpat, your justice, a synonym are as deep as the sea. Adam uvehema toshia Adonai. You God give salvation both to the human human beings and to the animal kingdom. Our God is the God of everything. Alenu two thirty one or two forty eight or five ninety eight. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakol l'tekru l'aliotzer reshit shelo asanu ko yaratzot v'lo hosamanu k'mishpachot adama shelo sam chalkenu kahem v'gohor aleinu k'chol hamonam v'anachnu kolim v'nishachavim u'modim l'fnei melech malchei hamlachim Hakadosh Baruch Hu Shehona Tashamayim Yosef Aretz Hu Moshe Vikara Bashamayim Imaal Hu Shchinat Zavu Gavim Imaal Okay. 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 Benemar Vahyadonai Lamelech Al Koha Aretz Bayomau Bayomau Ye Adunai Echad Ushemo 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 Echad Again, relying on the hope, expectation, assumption that we have a, mo a million of people gathered around their screens. Uh, still a new-ish thing for our community to be doing that as a way of accessing prayer on Shabbat, uh, but recognizing its sanctity, its holiness. We're going to say the Mourner's Kaddish on page 232, 249, or 600. Yit gadal v'yit shemei rabah. V'alma divra chirutei v'yamlich malchutei. Bechaye chon uvyome chon, uvchaye de chobet Yisrael, Bagala uvizman kari vimru amen, Yehe shme rabba mavorach leolam leomeo maya, Yit barach viyishtabach, viyit paar viyit romam viyit nase, viyit hadar viyit ale viyit halal, shmeda kudisha brichu, Leela min kobir hata vishirata, Tushbechata venechamata, Damiran be alma vimaru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya. Vechaim alenu vi al ko yisrael vimru amen. O se shalom bin romav. Huya se shalom. Alenu vi al ko yisrael vimru amen. You may be seated. And we'll take a little peek. Um, I'm not sure we'll get through all of these sources. Um, in the Shabbat bulletin uh, that went out before Shabbat, there was a link to this source sheet. Having said that, I got, just before Shabbat began, I got some emails that suggested that the link may not have been fully accessible to everybody, and for that I apologize. It was supposed to be, but it may not have been. So I will um, say every source that we're going to discuss out loud, and you won't have to do any guesswork if you don't have it in front of you. But you should have in front of you a chumash, um, to that verse that we were looking at before, which is chapter 1 of Bamidbar, verse six, 
16 and 17. So page 771 in, in the Eitz Chaim Chumash. By way of introduction, I want you to think about the association you have when you hear the English word rhetoric. It's a common word. It's a well-known word. And it's interesting the different valences that that word has. On the one hand, rhetoric in our society can be understood as something at being empty, vapid, no content, all rhetoric. When someone is being rhetorical, they're not speaking plainly. They're kind of going roundabout, or they are maybe digressing or diverging. So in some ways, rhetoric is not a compliment if someone is using rhetoric. You can use rhetoric as a critique. Ah, oh, that speech was totally empty. It was full of rhetoric. How about some real ideas? Other hand, rhetoric in other parts of the English language and in other settings is a high compliment. Rhetoric is the way that you craft words together to be persuasive both in terms of the style of delivery and the packaging. Right? We know that hearing two people give the same speech, conveying the same data, one plain and dry, the other using all sorts of rhetorical devices, conveying the same data, the second one will be more compelling. It's an honor, usually, when someone says that you know how to use rhetoric to give a good speech. When I was in college, every freshman at Columbia takes a semester-long course called Logic and Rhetoric. It's been that way for decades. My father-in-law, Rabbi Elliot Dorf, took the exact same course in the 19, I guess, early 60s as I took in the early 90s. It's a course designed to break you down, um, and no matter how good of a writer you think you are, in the first month, your instructor is supposed to convince you that you're a terrible writer so that you can rebuild your ability to write throughout the semester. It's a humbling class. You're supposed to write two or three essays every single week. I can remember some of the assignments verbatim. But that class called Logic and Rhetoric is built on the notion that rhetoric is a good thing. That was not logic on the one hand you want, rhetoric on the other hand you don't want. It's in order to construct a persuasive argument in writing and in speaking, you need both logic. It has to make sense. You have to move from point A to point B, point B to point Z, and lead people along. But you've got to do it in a rhetorical way that catches their attention, that is memorable. Or as Malcolm Gladwell might say, is sticky from his book, The Tipping Point. It's not just the delivery of notions. It's both, actually, as are many things. Rhetoric can be used to knock people down and to cover for a lack of content. And rhetoric can also be the best way to deliver very important content. With that in mind, I want to look at this verse. The reason I want to look at this verse is mostly because it is part of a series of midrashim that focus on the verb in the verse. Again, the verses were verse 16 and 17 of chapter 1 of Bamidbar. After naming the chieftains of all the tribes before this great census that's supposed to take place in the book of Numbers, that's why it's called the book of Numbers. But in Hebrew, it's Bamidbar because the first um, main word of the verse is this all happened in the desert. But in, the, in English, of course, is the book of Numbers. These are the elected ones, the one called out from the assembly, Nisiei Matot Abraham, the chieftains, the princes, sorry, not Abraham, Abutam, the chieftains, the princes of the tribes of their fathers, Rashei Alfei Yisraelhem. These were the heads of the great gatherings of the Israelites in the desert. So now that we know who they are, verse 17, Vayikach Moshe Yaharon, Moshe and Aaron took, interesting, by the way, just as a sideline, the verb Vayikach is singular, even though the subject is plural. Moshe via Aaron. It could have been by they took. But interestingly, it's the verb form of he took. He, Moshe, took, as if it's to say, with Aaron added in there. Whom did they take? Et ha'anashim ha'ela, these men, asher, who were, nikvu, were called, b'shemot, by name. 
Simple verse. We know what it means. They, they, they were named, and then he gathers them together to give an instruction. Okay. But it's not as simple as that. Look at this first midrash, if you have it, from the book called Sifra, which is a series of midrashim on the book of Bamidbar. Devarcher, another thing, meaning that earlier on in the midrash they had quoted a different point. Kach et aharon v'et banav ito. Going back into the book of Leviticus, chapter 8, verse 1, we have an instruction from God to Moshe, kach, take, same verb as in our verse, whom, take Aaron, v'et banav ito, and his sons with him. Ma Talmud Lomar, what's this trying to teach us? The question is, why that verb? Why take? It could have just been speak to them. Why, why, what's the input or the impact of the word take in this verse? The hello in the Midrash asks, and if you think about it, it actually many places. It's said regarding Moshe, a taking. Moshe seems to take people and take things all throughout the Torah. Bivnei Adam. Regarding people. Moshe is taking people all throughout the Torah. Shinemar, as it says, in the third chapter of Bamidbar, which is later in our parsha, Vilakhta et Halevi'im Li, you, Moses, take these Levites to me, Ani Hashem, I am God. In the eleventh chapter of Bresh of Bamidbar it says, Vilakhta Utam Eloha Moed, take those men to the tent of meeting. Moshe, Moshe keeps taking people. In our verse, which I put in bold. On the source sheet, Vaikach Moshe Anashim Ha'ela Shernik Vubishemot, Moshe took those men that had been counted. And one more example from the 27th chapter of Bamidbar, Kach Lacha et Yoshua Benun. Take Joshua the son of Nun when God is instructing Moses to take Joshua as an apprentice, as his disciple, to take over for him. Take, 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 take. Lakach, 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 lakach. In the Torah, Every verb is studied very, very carefully to make sure we understand all the nuances of it. Why is Moses taking things and people? And then the Midrash asks, V'chi mafshil haya Moshe b'nei adam l'acharav? Taking usually means like schlepping, get, like holding with your hands. The Midrash says, was, was Moshe like throwing them behind his back and slinging these people over his shoulder and taking them somewhere? Why take? He was just talking to them. He was just instructing them to go somewhere. Why that verb? Ella amarlo hakadosh baruch Rather, we read it as the Holy One saying to, to Moshe, kacham bidvarim. Take them with your words, Moshe. Notice the irony. Moshe, slow of speech. Moshe, who says, Lod ish dvarim anochi. I'm not a man of words. God says to him, you take them with your words. Shalo yel libam So that when you're done talking with them, they don't have anything in their hearts except for what you are saying. Moshe, go be a persuasive speaker. Moshe, use rhetoric. Moshe, you're my intermediary. If they're going to hear my message, they're going to hear it through you, and you've got to do it convincingly, persuasively. Weave a story together. Say it in a poem. Raise your voice and lower your voice. Speak well. Take them with your words. Stir them with your words, Moshe. This Midrash is clearly praising Moshe, or maybe praising God for telling Moshe this thing, to use rhetoric and to string words together in such a way that it will be persuasive. Okay, that's point one. Point two is a series of Midrashim, which we'll do very quickly because this is taking more time than I expected where the rabbis recognize other places where someone took, but not in such a way that deserves adulation. Look at the next uh, midrash. This is from Bamidbar Rabbah, chapter 18, verse uh, midrash 2. And this is commenting not on our chapter of, of Numbers, but in the 16th chapter of Numbers, which is the story of Korach and his rebellion against Moshe and Aaron. And that... Parsha begins, Vayikach Korach, Korach took. Korach took. You can see where this is going. Korach didn't just speak, Korach took. And the Midrash says, Vayikach, Ein Vayikach Ela Mishichat Hadvarim. Whenever the verb Vayikach is used and he took, that's suggesting a pulling 
someone with your words. What kind of darim rakim, soft words, maybe slippery words, words that are going to dupe you into doing something that you may not have done otherwise. Shinimshachu kol gedolei Yisrael v'hasanhedraot acharav. All of the great ones of Israel, even, this is anachronistic, even the members of the Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin is the, is the court that stood in Jerusalem, the Midrash is imagining there was a Sanhedrin in the desert. Even the most wise and circumspect of all of the leaders of Israel were taken in, we even have that in English, taken in by Korach. He didn't just speak to them, he didn't just give them a message, he took them for a ride. It also says, the Midrash says, but Moshe Omer, it also says regarding Moshe, Vayikach Moshe ve'aron et hanashim ha'ela. Moses took, Moses and Aaron took these men. That's our verse. So the Midrash is saying, it's not just Korach who's a taker, but also Moshe. And they give a couple other examples from the book of Leviticus, from the book of o, uh, Hoshe, Hosea, the prophet. And also, in the book of Reshit, Vatukach ha'isha beit paro. The woman was taken into the house of Pharaoh. Who's the woman? Sarah. This was not a gentle taking. She was forcibly taken. She was abducted into Pharaoh's house. Not the Pharaoh who's going to enslave the Israelites, but the Pharaoh that Abraham and Sarah met in their first journey to Egypt. In other words, Vaikach can mean Moshe rallying the troops, taking them to deliver a message from God. And it can also mean Korach taking them on a journey they're not supposed to go on and a woman being taken against her will into an emperor's home. Hevei, this is like Vaikach Korach, Korach Tok, Shebidvarim Rakim Mashach Libam. He pulled their hearts with a very, with, with, with um, soft, but too soft words, rhetoric that belied his negative intentions. In the last Midrash, which we'll do very quickly, um, late, from uh, later on in that chapter of Bamid Bar Rabbah, it tries to explain what were the words that Korach used that were slippery, that were soft, that in, entangled people, that were rhetorical. Vayikach Korach, Korach took. Makativ lamala min ha'inyan. What is written just before this section in Korach? The, just before Korach has Parshat Shlach Lecha, the very end of Parshat Shlach Lecha is the passage of Torah that gives us this law of tzitzit. Va'asu lahem tzitzit. When God says, make them fringes. So the rabbis imagine a phantom conversation between Korach and Moshe where Korach tried to use his words and his logic and his rhetoric to twist Moshe up into a pretzel. Kafatz Korach, interesting verb, uh, Korach jumped up Amar and said to Moshe, Talit shekula t'chelet. He gives Moshe a riddle. Imagine a talist that is filled with t'chelet. T'chelet is that blue dye that's supposed to be on the, some of the fringes of the tzitzit. Most of the people in our community don't wear them, but you can see them on some talitot. And that's exactly what the book of Bamidbar says, that the asulahem that you put on the uh, fringe of the garment a little string of tchelet. Are you telling me, Korach says to Moshe, that a, or, or he asked them, a talit shakula tchelet, a garment that is filled, the, the whole thing is made of this tchelet. Mahu shetehei p'tura min hatzitzit. Would a completely tchelet talis be exempt from having to put tzitzit on it? Amarlo, Moshe said, kind of anachronistically knowing the halacha in advance. Chayevet betzitzit. No, that garment would need tzitzit. Korach, having entrapped Moshe, said to him, Amarlo, Korach, are you telling me talit shekula tchelet, a talus which is made entirely of tchelet, ein poteret atzma, doesn't exempt itself. Arba'a chutin, but you add in four strings of tchelet, potrotota, and all of a sudden it's exempt. You see the pickle that Moshe was in, right? You're telling me that this white talit, if I put four strings of tchelet on it, I fulfilled my obligation. So four strings makes this talus kosher. But if the whole talus itself were filled with tchelet, because that's what it was made of, that wouldn't make it kosher? Later on in the Midrash, um, the, he, they use another example of Korach trying to trick 
Moshe with his words, taking him along, taking him exactly where he wants him to take him, like a brilliant rhetorician, except in not regarding the tzitzit, but, you, but regarding the mezuzah. I won't go through the details. I want to just get to the punchline. At the end of this midrash, the rabbis offer a healthy and important warning and maybe even a rebuke regarding what happens when you rely too much on the persuasive power of your words to take people where they don't want to go. It said above, in our verse, it's said above in our verse in Bamidbar, these are the named ones of the princes, the heads of each tribe. And then it says, Moses and Aaron took them, same verb, those men that were called out by name. And it says, in Korach, Venemarkan, Nisie Eida Kriei Moed, those same princes of the gathering, Kriei Moed, who were um, elected by the assembly, on Sheshem, worthy people, people who should be discerning, Vaikahalu al Moshe Yaharon, and they rose up against Moshe and Aaron. What the Midrash is saying is the very same men that Moshe and Aaron took got taken in by Korach, and then rose up against them. I believe that the lesson, the moral, the sermonette of this Midrash is if you are going to live in a society where rhetoric on its own is what you're going to use to persuade people, even to the good, which is what we imagine Moshe and Aaron were doing when they were lakaching, when they were taking those men in our verse, you better be prepared to live in a society where rhetoric can pull people to the bad as well, which is what happens when the very same men who were taken in by Moshe and Aaron take up voice and take up rebellion against Moshe and Aaron because Korach found a way to take them on a ride. To wrap it all up so we can do Mariv and end Shabbat, I'm a person who loves words, as you know. I'm using them right now. I hope I'm using them persuasively. I imagine, both intentionally and unintentionally, I use a little bit of rhetoric to get my point across. I didn't just deliver a simple message with no turns of phrase. I tried to take you along for a bit of a ride so it was more interesting to you. That very technique is critical in sharing words of Torah. The Midrash is rhetorical. Midrash uses words, lakach, to take people on a ride. And it's dangerous. And you don't want to create a society or a community that is susceptible to just hearing nice things and following him because it feels good to hear those words going down like a glass of Moscato compared to a Cabernet. You can get very drunk on Moscato very quickly because you just it goes down so easily, as it were. So I offer this up to you as you're thinking about how you're going to use your words this week and how you're going to listen to word this week. Pay attention to the way rhetoric is used in articles, in news presentations, in devray Torah and sermons. Know that rhetoric, as I know you already know, we're just reinforcing it, can be used to bring people towards the light. It can be used to bring people towards the dark. And that is the rub, that is the challenge of being gifted as we are as human beings with the ability to use and understand words. How do we make sure that the rhetoric that we are using and the rhetoric we are hearing are the ones that are being marshaled towards the right aims and not the ones that are supposed to lead us in the direction of Korach? May that be our challenge to attune our ears and attune our own lips so that our rhetoric is used to take people toward the sources of good. Shabbat Shalom, or Shavuot Tov. We're going to daven Mariv now, and you can follow along, beginning with uh, on 264 of the Lev Shalem, page 281 in the um, Slim Shalom, 
and 200 in the Sim Shalom. We're going to do it pretty quickly because Shabbat is over also because I know that the Zoom out is happening very soon, and I want you to be able to experience that as well. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ahani Adonai Eloheichem, Asher Tzaiti Erchem Eretz Mitzrayim, Liot Lachem Lelohim, Ani Adonai Eloheichem, Emet V'yemuna Kozot V'kayemun. We'll do in English 267-284. 206. The English will be slightly different in each Sidur. I'm doing it from the Lev Shalem. Allow us, Adonai, our God, to sleep peacefully. Awaken us to life, O Sovereign. Spread over us your canopy of peace. Restore us with your good counsel and save us for the sake of your, she of your name. Shield us. Remove from us enemies, pestilence, sword, starvation, and sorrow. Remove the evil forces that surround us. Shelter us in the shadow of your wings, for you, God, watch over and deliver us and you are sovereign, merciful, and compassionate. Ensure our coming and our going for life and peace, now and forever. Baruch ata Adonai, Shomer Amo Yisrael Laad. The Amidah is, is recited quietly, beginning on 270 in the Lev Shalem, 286 in the Slim Shalom, 210 in the Sim Shalom. Make sure to add in the paragraph uh, after the third blessing for the end of Shabbat. I'll be turning to face the Arona Kodesh for the Amida.
ומזומן, הנה אני מוכן ומזומן, הנה אני מוכן ומזומן, הנה אני מוכן ומזומן, לקיים מצוות תעשה, הנה אני מוכן ומזומן, כמו שכתוב בתורה, הנה אני מוכן ומזומן, וספרתם לכם עם אחרת השבת, הנה אני מוכן ומזומן, מיום אביאכם מאת עומר התנופה, הנה אני מוכן ומזומן. Before we count, before we do Elena, we'll count the Omer together. That's another thing, Norm, if you're watching, that we need to be putting on the sheet. But we are so, I'm so grateful to you that you have made this. Uh, the, the count of the Omer is on page 63 in the Lev Shalem, page 55 in the Slim Shalom, and in the Sim Shalom, dum -da -dum -dum -dum. just the exact thing you didn't want me to do, page 2. 36. Yesterday was the uh, huh, 37th day of the Omer, so we don't say this day, this day the Omer until we actually count it. So yesterday was the 37th, that tells you which day the Omer this is. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kedishanam b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu al sfirat ha-Omer. היום שמונה ושלושים יום שהם חמישה שבועות ושלושה ימים לאומר. Today are 38 days, which are five weeks and three days to the Omer. עלינו can be found on 281, 297, or 696. עלינו לשבח לאדון הכל לתקו לעשה בשבועות סנאפו יערסות. לא סמנה כשפחות, לא סמכל כנהם הגורלנו לפני מלך ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד ושמו אחד אין עוד אין עוד אין עוד אין עוד אין עוד מורנרס קאדש 282-298 או 698 יתגדל ויתקדש שמר רבה. בעלמה דברה חירותי וימליך מלכותי. בחיי חון וביומי חון ובחיי דכל בית ישראל. בעגלה ובזמן קרי ואמרו אמן. יהי שמי רבה מבורך לעולם לעולמי עולמיה. יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא. ויית הדר ויית עלה ויית הלל שמי דקודשה בריחו. לאלה מנקו ברכתה ושירתה, תושבחתה ונחמתה, תאמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיה, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל. We'll do Havdalah. I know that the Zoom out has already begun, so I'll do Havdalah quickly, and then I encourage all of you to go off the live stream and to go join Rabbi Schatz, who's doing Zoom Havdalah, and I'll be there as soon as I can make it home after doing Havdalah with all of you.
Orlando, if you're watching, you can come in and turn the lights off. He nail Yeshua Hati Eftach Velo Efchad Kiyozi Vezimrad Ya Adonai Vayahili Lishua Ushaftamayim Besason Me Mainaya Yeshua Ladonai Yeshua Alam Chabir Chatecha Sela Adonai Tzvaot Imanu Miskavlanu Elohei Yaakov Sela Adonai Tzvaot Ashrei Adam Boteach Bach Adonai Yoshia Hamalech Yaneinu Veyom Koreinu La Yehudim Haita Ora Vesimcha Vesasson Veyekar Kain Tielanu Kos Yeshuot Esa Uveshem Adonai Yekra Yainanai Yadonai Nainai Aina na ya ya na 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 Baruch ata Adonai Elohim Mechalam Borei Priyagafen Baruch ata Adonai Mechalam Borei Minei Besamim Baruch ata Adonai Mechalam Borei Miorei Haish Baruch ata Adonai Elohim Mechalam Hamavdil ben Kosher ben El Kosher ben Yisrael Mi min Yomai Shulish Sheish Me Hamase Baruch Adonai Hamavdil ben Kodesh Lecho Hamavdil ben Kodesh Lecho Chatoteinu Imcho Zareinu Vechaspeinu Yarbe Yarbe Kacho Vekako Chavim Balayla Zareinu vechaspeinu yarbe yarbe kacho vekako chavim balayla. Eliyahu hanavi, Eliyahu hatishpi, Eliyahu hanavi, Eliyahu hagiladi, Eliyahu hanavi, Eliyahu hatishpi, Eliyahu hanavi, Eliyahu hagiladi. Bemehira yavo elinu imashiach imashiach ben David bemehira yavo elinu imashiach mashiach ben David. Shavua to everyone. A good week. A healthy week. A week of peace. A week of vigor. A week of optimism. Maybe a week of a little bit of opening up of our society and a certainly of opening up of our hearts. Go on to the Zoom. Tell Rabbi Schatz I'll be there soon. Shavuot Tov. I miss you and I love you. Bye.